What's going on guys? My name is Sam and welcome back to another video. Now, I know this doesn't look like a 3D printer because it's not, but do not worry. I have a plan on incorporating this into 3D printing. What I have sitting in front of me is the Algo Lasers brand new DIY kit Mark II. And I am super excited to get familiar with this laser engraver for a few different reasons. Now, I have been wanting to get into the laser engraving scene for a while now. And sure, there are laser engravers like Xtool and OM Tech, but who wants to spend over a thousand dollars for their first laser engraver, especially when you just want to learn. That being said, when Algo Laser reached out and asked if I could review their product, I was thrilled at the opportunity to try it out and show you guys what they have to offer. But why would you want to buy this laser engraver over other engravers that are on the market right now? And I'm glad you asked. The first reason is the size of the print area. The Algo Laser DIY Kit Mark II has a 400 by 435 millimeter workspace. And for us Americans, that is 15.7 inches by 17.1 inches. That is a huge workspace for engraving. And if you desire to do something that big, that would give you plenty of space for pretty serious projects. Additionally, Algo Laser also offers an extension kit, which over doubles the workspace by 212%. This opens the door for creating products like signs or large landscape engravings requiring this size. And as of right now, the time of posting this video, the extension kit is available for only $99. The second reason is the touchscreen loaded with Algo Laser OS. Now, if you look at the competitors, you will quickly find that the majority of laser engravers, consumer laser engravers that are available right now, do not come with a touch screen. Meaning if you wanna use them, they have to be either connected to your computer or you have to load the file that you want to engrave onto the engraver with an SD card. What makes having a touch screen so convenient is that I can plug in the SD card, change all of my settings, view the actual thing that I'm about to engrave, focus the laser into the engraving area that I'm engraving on, and then actually begin the engraving without the need of the computer. I can even change the settings while it is engraving and change my engravings next time accordingly. The intuitive nature of the OS really does make it a game changer and lets even the biggest of beginners start using it pretty quickly. The third reason is the large amount of flexibility you get when you buy into the Algo Laser ecosystem. These are just the frequently bought add-ons that you can find on their page. And this is not including the extension kit that I mentioned earlier. What I like about this is that you can buy the base product for an extremely reasonable price. That will do plywood, MDF, cardboard, corrugated board, acrylic board, cork sheet, polycarbonate, Depron foam, non-woven fabric, bamboo chips, leather, glass, ceramics, tiles, aluminum oxide, stainless steel, and coated metal materials. Meaning this is an extremely capable machine as it is without all of the extra add-ons. They are not forcing you into a massive price tag with all of the extras being forced into the package they're selling. They give you a base machine and then they say, hey, if you want all of this extra stuff too, we'll sell you what you need for your specific type of engraving that you would like to do. And really, I think that is an awesome business model. The fourth reason is price. Now the five watt model will set you back about $269 while the 10 watt model which is what I am going to be reviewing today is offered for $369. If you would like to purchase this engraver at the conclusion of this review the link to their website where it will take you to the product page is going to be in the description below. We still have a lot to cover, so let's get into the assembly. Straight out of the box, you get quite a few things. There is some assembly required, but overall, I think from taking out of the box to having it up and running was about 30 minutes. Running down the line, you have the five boom arms that make up the frame, including the x-axis frame that the actual laser sits on. You have the four corner pieces that hold everything together, as well as the main control module that houses the touchscreen. They also give you a few different materials for testing, like this basswood and an acrylic sheet. Also included is the laser itself, the belts for the laser to move back and forth, and all the necessary screws and washers for assembly. You also get this sweet pair of shades to protect your eyes in case you have a bad habit of staring directly into the light. Included is this extremely thorough and easy to read quick start guide. And to assemble, we'll start by screwing in the four end brackets. Sliding on the X frame before attaching the front two corner brackets. Now that the last two corner brackets are attached and the x-axis is mounted, 
We will attach the belts for the stepper motors to actually move the laser back and forth. Feeding the belt through the front and into this tiny hole, we will bring it down underneath this roller and over the gear, back underneath the second roller and then out through the back. After you have repeated this process for the other side, you can use this screw and this washer to secure one side, pulling it taut on the other side and then screwing it down. You will repeat this exact process for the other side as well. From here, you can screw on the limit switch, which only requires these two small screws. Now we can attach the laser. To attach the laser, just slide it down into these grooves and using these thumb screws, we can tighten it into this bracket. To adjust the height of the laser, just untighten the screws, adjust the height, and then tighten them back. If you had the air pump that goes with this model, this is when you would install the nozzle and the hose. However, the base model does not come with an air pump, so I cannot show that assembly. We are now in the final stretch. Grabbing the control module, we can screw it into the front frame piece with these two screws. And to connect everything, we can insert the wire harness, which is pretty foolproof. And that's all there is to it. Now that everything is completely assembled, we can plug in the power adapter and start trying out some engravings. Okay, so let me show you how easy this is. Right now I'm in Photoshop and I wanted to put my logo on a piece of wood. So let's say you were designing this from scratch and you designed your design in Photoshop or whatever program you were using. You would have your program or your, your file that you designed then you would export this as a JPEG or a PNG and upload it onto a flash drive. Now that I have the file uh, loaded onto this flash drive, I'm gonna take it back to the engraver and stick it in the engraver. After plugging it in, I'm going to select the USB option so that I can see the file I just downloaded onto it and then I'm gonna click it. As you can see, the image pops up that I loaded onto the thumb drive, which is an awesome thing because I can see what I'm engraving uh, just by navigating through the file explorer in Algo OS. So I'm gonna go ahead and click engraving. And all I'm gonna do now is choose the settings that I want. This includes setting the size, the power, the type of material I want to engrave on. As you can see, there are a lot of materials to choose from. And I'm gonna choose basswood because that's what I'm gonna be engraving on. To ensure the laser is focused, they provide you with this small little focus assist. And basically all this does is you set it underneath the hood and lower the laser until the edge of this hood touches the edge of the focus assist. And once it touches, that's how you know it's focused. From here, I can preview where the laser is going to engrave exactly by clicking this button. Once you have it lined up exactly, just press start and it will begin. <clears throat> so from what I have seen so far, I like it. I realized that what I did in this video didn't really push it to its limits. And a large reason for that is because like I said at the beginning, I am still a beginner. The more intense projects that I do with it will probably come as I get more experience with it and more knowledge just about engraving in general. And I realized that I forgot to mention it also has an emergency button and a safety lock. If you are engraving and you realize that you're about to burn a hole in your table, you can press on that button 
and it will immediately shut off the laser, which is a nice feature to have. Also, you have this set of keys as a safety if you have kids running around. Once again, the link is in the description below if you'd like to check this out. If you feel like there's anything in this video that I could have done better or anything that I left out, because I think there's probably a lot of stuff that I left out, then don't hesitate to comment that down below. If you got any value from this video, please consider subscribing. And if you watch this far, thank you very much. I look forward to making more videos with this engraver and incorporating them into 3D prints and just seeing what I can create with it. So once again, thank you and we'll see you in the next one.